What is up, bros and brats? I'm Ing Slasher, and today we're going to answer how good is the M4 Carbine. Now, this is a weapon in Modern Warfare Remastered that's really interesting because a lot of people really like this weapon, and then a lot of people really think it's not a good weapon at all. So, by the end of this video, we'll be able to decide whether this weapon is actually good or not. Now, I'm really interested to see what you guys want to see next. Let me know down in the comment section below which weapon you would like me to do next on how good is. It can be for Infinite Warfare, it can be for Modern Warfare. Warfare Remastered. I'm interested to see what you guys think and whatever gets the most comments, that's what we'll do in the next video. The one other thing is, is that if you're going to get yourself some control freaks, uh, now is the best time of year to do so because my coupon code INC, if you use it at checkout, it will actually get you 15% off instead of 10% off. It's like a boxing day deal or holiday deal they've got going on. So if you're going to get yourself control freaks, they really do help out your aim. They're super cheap and you can get yourself 15% off of them instead of 10% off with the coupon code code ink right now so check that out they're linked down in the description but let's look at the m4 carbine and decide how good of a weapon it really is so as always let's start off with the damage profile so the damage profile for the m4 is probably the worst part of the weapon it deals 30 damage up close and 20 at long range without stopping power which is a 4 to a 5 bullet kill but with stopping power it is a 3 to a 4 bullet kill i definitely recommend using stopping power on this weapon because if you don't it feels like it takes a very long time to kill people so stopping power is almost a must on this weapon now it drops from that three to a four bullet kill with stopping power at 43.75 meters so it's got some actual pretty good range but that's pretty consistent with the drop off range for most assault rifles in this game so really nothing special as far as range goes there now this is where it gets interesting is when we look at fire rate so the fire rate is actually pretty damn good at 857 rpm or 1153 with double tap i don't recommend using double tap though i definitely recommend using stopping power like we talked about earlier now the thing with this weapon is that that's actually a slower fire rate than the M16's original burst. The M16's three round burst fires at 900 RPM, and that's why you feel like you get absolutely melted by an M16 because it can kill in two to three bullets, AKA one burst, and the one burst actually has a faster fire rate than the M4, so you're killing in with a faster fire rate and a higher damage profile with the M16. So this isn't looking good for the M4 at this point. However, there is stats for the M4 that make up for this. So what are these stats? That's the real question. The main one and the the biggest one is the recoil. This weapon has a very, very little recoil. It's really easy to aim with, especially if you throw a red dot sight on there. Considering I don't really like the iron sights for this weapon, I really do like using that red dot sight. Also, there's really no point in using a suppressor or anything else. I definitely recommend a red dot sight for this weapon. So what I'm getting at is that the recoil is very easy to control at short, medium, and long range. But the stats continue to get a little bit better when we look at the reload speed. So the reload speed is 2.03 seconds with bullets still in the magazine and 2.36 seconds with an empty magazine now the 2.36 seconds is pretty good considering most assault rifles are more around three seconds with uh an empty magazine but the 2.03 seconds is the best that it's the second best reload time for assault rifles next to the m16 the m16 is two seconds the m4 is 2.03 seconds they're almost identical it's 0 0.03 seconds different between the two but in other words what i'm getting at is it has a very fast reload time compared to all the other assault rifles which is definitely a great pause for the weapon so as far as the other smaller stats go for this weapon they're almost exactly the same as the other assault rifles you got an aim down sights time of 0.25 seconds you got a sprint out time of 0.3 seconds you got a magazine of 30 rounds which is consistent with all of the fully automatic assault rifles in this game so what i'm getting at is it's very consistent with the other assault rifles it's just the kind of fire rate and the damage profile and reload speed that are a little bit different for this weapon and of course the lesser recoil than other weapons however there is a bad stat for this weapon and it's the idle sway the idle sway for the m4 and the ak-47 are the highest in class and they're exponentially larger than weapons like the m16 g3 mp44 m14 exponentially larger like huge amounts larger and you can notice this as soon as you aim down sights you will notice that your sights or your red dot sight will kind of sway just a little bit and it's a little bit more difficult to initially get your aim on target but like i said it makes up for that by having an incredibly small amount of recoil making it easier for you to aim once you actually start shooting so it's not a huge deal that it has this higher idle sway it's just important to know it's there now what is going to be a best class setup for this weapon so like i said before i really do do think stopping power is extremely important on this weapon i definitely think it's better than double tap and i definitely think it's better than juggernaut just because it already has such a low damage profile and it already has a pretty good fire rate 
On top of that, I think I like to use Deep Impact with this weapon, but that being said, I could definitely take an argument to use Dead Silence depending on what game mode you're playing and what type of game style you play. On top of that, Bandolier is pretty good on this weapon, simply because I find myself running out of bullets for it pretty frequently, but other than that, Triple Frag or Triple Stun are both pretty good uh, first perks for this class setup. On top of that, like I said before, I really don't like the Iron Sights for this weapon, so I definitely recommend throwing on a Red Dot site there making it a little bit easier for you to aim especially with the higher idle sway on this weapon so overall it's a pretty straightforward class setup i wouldn't recommend doing anything fancy with it just like i said definitely stopping power either deep impact or dead silence and then finally either bandolier triple frag or triple stun so as far as how good is this weapon, it definitely has a slower time to kill than either the AK-47 or the M16. However, it is still a good weapon simply because it's so easy to aim with this thing. Super easy to get headshots across the map and definitely probably the easiest assault rifle to aim other than maybe the G3. So in other words, how good is this weapon? It's not amazing. It's not one of the best weapons in the game, but by no means is it a bad weapon. I definitely give it like a 7 out of 10. Like I said, not amazing, but still definitely usable and still a decent weapon weapon so guys that's all i got for you today and if you enjoyed the video it would be fantastic if you could hit that like button it really does help out the channel and i really do appreciate it on top of that let me know down in the comment section what weapon you want me to look at next also if you're new to the channel and like what you see here it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button i upload new call of duty videos every single day of the week so if you're interested in that that subscribe button is sitting there with your name on it also you can check out my twitch twitter second channel and instagram all down in the description but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and until next time, peace out. Whoa.